On this week's show, concept car after concept car after concept car after... I don't even know what that is. These stories and more coming up next on 10. Enjoying today's show on YouTube and want to read the stories you're referring to today? Just head to our website at transportevolve.com forward slash TEN where you'll find today's show notes as well as the links to the latest future car news, buying guides, tech primers and car reviews. It's Friday, October 30th, 2015. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield and thanks to our Patreon supporters, we're still completely ad-free. It's also episode 100, which totally blows my mind. Thanks for staying with us for the past 99 shows. It might have been out of production now for more than three years, but Tesla Motors hasn't forgotten about its aging two-seat roadster. And this week we brought you two very important pieces of news regarding the car, which gave Tesla the kickstart it needed to gain dominance in the electric vehicle marketplace. The first came at the start of the week when we confirmed that Tesla is now offering its $29,000 Tesla Roadster 3.0 upgrade package to owners of every Tesla Roadster on the road today, including the 500 or so Tesla Roadster 1.5 models, which were originally excluded from the 400 plus mile Tesla Roadster upgrade package. The second came on Wednesday when Tesla confirmed that it had signed a new deal with South Korean electronic supplier LG Chem to supply it with the required 18650 form factor lithium ion cells it needed to make those Tesla roads to 3.0 upgrade packages a reality. That deal, likely a rather low volume one, will help Tesla's supply of lithium ion battery cells stay healthy until the massive Gigafactory goes online next year. Until then, LG Chem is just lending a hand to help keep sure that Tesla can keep up with demand. Fair enough. It's the end of October, which means that this week the Tokyo Motor Show opened its doors to the public with a plethora of futuristic vehicles promising a safer and cleaner vision of the future. Among them, Japanese automaker Nissan, which unveiled its all-electric, fully autonomous IDS electric car, which some say hint at what a future Nissan Leaf might look like. We're not convinced of that particular point, but the IDS, complete with next-generation 60 kilowatt hour lithium-ion battery pack, coach doors and fold away manual controls, previews a not too distant future where Nissan's cars will not only drive you around town, but also help you pick out a place to eat, find entertainment and more. At the heart of the IDS lies an always-on internet connection and Nissan's intelligent driving system, a fully autonomous system that allows the car to take over for you as and when you need it to. Sadly, the IDS is unlikely to make it to production, but keep posted for news later in today's show about Nissan's plan to introduce rudimentary autonomous functions in next year's Nissan LEAF. Staying in Japan for a second, Mitsubishi also rolled out a believable vision of the future this week with the unveiling of its long-range EX concept crossover SUV at the Tokyo Motor Show. Powered by twin electric motors and a low-slung next-generation lithium-ion battery pack of unknown specification, offering a claimed 400 kilometers of range on the Japanese test cycle, the EX concept is more than capable of off-road travel, but, says Mitsubishi, has been designed primarily for use in the urban jungle. Slightly more conventional in its control interfaces than some of the other concepts on display this year, the EX can be driven as a regular car or operate in fully autonomous mode. Unlike Nissan's autonomous system, however, the Mitsubishi EX's self-driving capabilities seem to be a little more hypothetical at the moment than real world. Still, with believable lines and styling borrowed from current production Mitsubishi models, we're hopeful this interesting concept car will, one day, see the light of day. From one mega city to another, but for this story, it's back to good old London town, where, as we told you earlier this week, the London Mayor and Transport for London have finally finalised future requirements for zero emissions capable taxis and minicabs. A long-term goal of the current Mayor Boris Johnson, the new guidelines are the result of a second round of consultation with stakeholders and taxi operators in London, and will see the entire London back cab and private hire fleets gain zero emission capability 
eligibility by 2023, regardless of age. We'll spare you the details here as we don't have much time, but essentially London will soon offer licensed hackney carriage and private hire firms up to £13,000 in incentives to switch their dirty diesel cabs for plug-in hybrid or all-electric ones. The whole process will be tiered, but ultimately it should result in far less emissions from private hire vehicles in London and no more horrible diesel engines throwing soot everywhere. As they say in England, happy days. When it comes to hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, there really aren't that many choices out there right now. There's the limited production Toyota Mirai FCV, the similarly limited production Hyundai iX35 FCV, or Tucson if you're in the States, and the just launched Honda Clarity FCV, a car we would be including in today's show if only Honda had actually released some good quality video footage of it. Anyway, in Tokyo this week, Toyota's luxury arm Lexus unveiled the LFFC, a large fuel cell sedan which is both zero emissions and surprisingly good looking. What's more, Lexus was open about the fact that the LF was a preview of its next generation LS luxury sedan. While it doesn't mean we'll see a hydrogen fuel cell LS hitting the market for sure, it certainly raises a possibility in our minds. And with the T-shaped fuel cell tank under the floor and fuel cell stack in the rear of the vehicle, this car looks and feels like a regular car. After that butt ugly Mirai, that's a definite improvement. Like every other concept car this year in Tokyo, autonomous driving comes as a standard and hints at a recent report from Nikkei, the LS fuel cell sedan could hit the market sometime in 2020, just in time for the Tokyo Olympics. Watch this space. I'm not sure about you, but one of the things I love best about driving a future zero emission car is the fact that I can check on my car's state of charge and set the climate control all from a smartwatch on my wrist. But this week we told you the disturbing news that a patent troll is coming after Apple, Samsung and pretty much the entire automotive industry over those neat smartwatch apps you can get to control your plug-in car. The claim that everyone and their dog is violating a patent filed in 2003 relating to the remote unlocking and starting of a car via a watch. I'll save you the sordid details here, but the patent troll wants around $2 million in licensing fees from any company which has developed and built a smartwatch amp for an electric car, and it's readying itself to take each and every company associated with such an app to court. It's a horrible case, and rest assured we'll be following it very, very closely. As we promised earlier in the show, it seems that while Nissan's IDS concept car may not make it into production, Nissan does intend to bring partial autonomous vehicle capabilities to the Leaf electric car, starting with a rollout in Japan next year. As we detailed over the weekend, Nissan will roll out version 1.0 of its intelligent driving system next year in Japan, with Leafs coming with the necessary hardware and software needed to operate fully autonomously on single lane roads, as well as navigate their way through busy stop and go traffic without human interaction. It will be followed a year or two later by version 2.0 of the same system, which will add multi-lane capabilities, fully autonomous overtaking, and even the ability to handle a busy intersection without help from a human. As always, regulation is likely to be the biggest hurdle to mass adoption around the world. So, Here's hoping Nissan's Japanese rollout of this important technology goes smoothly and encourages other countries to follow. When it comes to concept vehicles, some automakers like to design vehicles that hint at a future production vehicle. Others like to demonstrate a car that is a complete flight of fancy. And at this year's Tokyo Motor Show, Mercedes-Benz was most certainly in the latter group, unveiling its Tokyo Vision concept, an all-electric, fully autonomous, minivan come party bus. There's a ton of LEDs, more connectivity than you can throw a stick at, and passengers sit on a C-shaped bench inside. Says Benz, it's a vehicle designed for Generation Z, the first real generation to never know a time before the internet or smartphones. As a consequence, it's got more to keep you occupied than your average in-flight entertainment system. But it's also a van, which just doesn't do it for me. After all, when did looking out the window become so darned boring? That's actually one of the things I like best about going on a journey. 
And finally, it's been a few weeks since Tesla rolled out its autopilot enabling software upgrade to thousands of Tesla Model S electric cars worldwide. And ever since then, we've seen a run of people eagerly demonstrating their car's self-driving capabilities on YouTube. But this week, we saw a couple of examples of the Tesla Model S's active safety features stepping in to save the car and their occupants from some pretty nasty accidents. One of them in particular, a video from a grey market Model S in Russia, shows that nearly while every other Russian has been involved in an accident at one time or another on the roads, crazy Russian taxi drivers who perform illegal undertakes aren't a match for the mighty Tesla Model S. As this video shows, this Model S detects the wayward taxi cab brakes, swerves, and carries on as normal, much to the delight of its owner. It just goes to show, if you want to live in Russia, buy a Model S. No Russian trip for me, I'd probably get locked up. But one day I still want to ride that road of bones. That's it for today, but you can find all the news that's fit to print at our website at transportevolve.com. Catch up with us on Twitter at Transport Evolve, or check out our latest shows on our usual YouTube channel. And if you liked what you saw today, consider keeping us independent and impartial by visiting our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Transport Evolve and pledging your support from as little as one dollar a month or one pound a month or whatever your local currency is as always there's a lot we haven't managed to fit into today's show including a review of the garmin nuvican gps with traffic cam mercedes takes three days to drive from los angeles to san francisco in hydrogen fuel cell b class prototypes honda promises a new plug-in hybrid based on the same platform as its just launched clarity fuel cell sedan and jaguar land rover says no to electrics for now so when we're done, be sure to head to our site to read them all. Thanks for watching. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Have a great weekend. And until next time, keep evolving.